Welcome to Family Church. We are a diverse, spirit-filled, life-giving church, healing hurts, building relationships, and developing leaders. My name is Pastor John Mark, and I'm so excited that you decided to connect today. Right now, grab something to take notes with as we begin today's message. <laughs> Sensational. Let me tell you a little bit about your students. I went to teen camp, obviously I'm a pastor, like, all right, how can I serve the students? How can I help them grow in their relationship with God? Little did I know, them students helped me. (laughs) The way that they were passionate about the things of God, like, they had really fun activities, and it's, the activity started, some of them, at 10 a.m., and at 11.30, there's still a ton of kids just by themselves, reading their Bibles, praying, studying. So this group, it's a really special generation of students upstairs. Well, give it up for yourselves, parents. And thank you to everyone who donated and made it possible for these students to go to camp. So we are on week two of our series titled Connect. Look at someone next to you and tell them connect. Look at your back of choice, tell them connect. And this week, or really this week, but all for this series, we're talking about the importance of being connected to the people who are around us. That as Christians, that we are not created to live in isolation, but that God's perfect design for us is actually that we would live in community. Now, we are looking at the importance of relationships through the lenses of technology, of a computer network, but if you are not a computer expert, do not be nervous. You can still under, yes, if you use your phone like this, after eight, you just, and you text like this, as someone said, ask me, I ain't going to (laughs) look. But this series, all we're doing is taking some simple ideas from technology to make it make sense. So this week, we are talking about a firewall. Everybody say firewall. And here is the definition of a firewall. It is a network security device that monitors incoming and outgoing network traffic. And here's the important part. It decides whether to allow or block specific traffic based on a defined set of security rules. It decides whether to allow or block specific traffic based on a defined set of rules. And I'm gonna change it for the series. It decides whether to allow or block certain people based on a defined set of rules. In other words, the network says there are certain, a firewall says there are certain things allowed in and other things will be blocked. And how many of you know sometimes people need to be blocked? Y'all yeah, amen a little too loud. Whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> relax. <laughs> we try to start no fights here. But if you're still not getting this, this technology idea, I want to show you another way to make it really simple. And I want to use one of my favorite movies known as Troy. By show of hands, has anyone ever seen the movie Troy? It is a great movie if you like sword fighting, if you are a Christian who loves to just binge on violence after church, Troy is a great example. And it's really just telling a a Greek mythology story. And who here has ever heard of someone named Achilles? Like the Achilles heel? So it's that story. So here is the quick story, the quick overview of the movie Troy. So we've got a woman named Helen of Troy. Can we see Helen, please? And in the story, she's the most beautiful woman in the whole earth. Like, she has the most beautiful face ever, and that's not her husband. Somebody say, "Uh uh-oh. They look like more than friends to me. The way he got, he doing the horse thing, he a little too happy. Because they more than just friends. So Helen of Troy is not actually from Troy, but she runs away with this man who is very fond of her. So as it's going on, she goes outside, runs away with this man, and then her actual husband is not very happy about this. I imagine he wakes up, he looks at his iPhone. (laughs) He had her location, and she in the middle of the sea. He says, hmm, I know her nail appointment was across the sea. And then he goes and he talks to his, his men who are around him, his army, and they say, so, 
I ain't gonna lie, you my boy, right? It's not your girl anymore. <laughs> she gone. So what happens in the movie is they launch a full-scale war. He says, I'm going to get my woman back. So they arrive at the city of Troy, but the city of Troy has walls built all around the outside of it. Everyone say walls. So it's the same exact idea as a firewall, that the idea of a wall is to protect the city from people that shouldn't be able to gain entry. So this siege, which means they surrounded the walls and pretty much said, come out and fight. And the people inside inside the wall said, come and get us. It goes on for 10 years. And after 10 years, they say, you know what? You guys inside the walls, you've got it. And we're going to build a nice little statue to congratulate you on your win, known as the Trojan horse. Has anyone ever heard of the Trojan horse? What's special about the Trojan horse is it might look like this from the outside, a nice statue. Let's see that next picture. But there's room on the inside. So they see this Trojan horse, and one person in the movie says, burn it. But everyone else goes, no, look how beautiful it is. Look at our victory spoils. Let's let's bring it into the city. You might have heard it this way if you're a parent. But dad, he's so nice. Look how handsome he is. He goes to church once every nine months, man of God. (laughs) And these people in the city, Troy, they say, you know what? We won the battle. Let's bring in this Trojan horse to celebrate. And inside that Trojan horse is a man named Achilles. And as the story goes on, because they brought in the Trojan horse, here is how the city ends up looking that same night. On fire, burning, chaos. And here's the idea of the story. That sometimes when you let the wrong people into your city, it will burn. When you give the wrong people access to your life, it will burn. That sometimes there are people that are wrapped up in a nice, pretty statue called the Trojan horse, and it looks like, oh, this person is so kind, and they're so gentle, but the reality is, inside that person is an idea that is aimed at taking out your city, making your life in havoc. In the same way that the wall of that city was designed to keep the wrong things out, we as a people ought to have firewalls. You might have heard the word boundaries. We ought to set boundaries from which people have access to our lives and which people don't. The Apostle Paul puts it this way in 1 Corinthians chapter 15, do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Evil company corrupts good habits. Now notice what it doesn't say. It doesn't say that evil company corrupts good company. It says evil company corrupts good habits. That there might be patterns of things that you do that keep your city called your life flourishing. And then all of a sudden, the wrong person comes in and you give them access to your life. And all of a sudden, it's like, what happened? I was moving in a certain direction, and now it feels like I'm stuck. As we talk about this firewall today, this idea in this sermon, the goal is not that we isolate ourselves from other people. My goal today is that in making connections, that we are careful not to make the wrong connections. Because just as we saw on the screen, that sometimes having the wrong people in can create havoc. As we're talking about connecting to each other and the role that we play in the body of Christ, I want to read our main passage for this sermon, for this series. Romans chapter 12, verse 4 says this. For just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we, though many, form one body, and and each member belongs to all the others. Let's pray this morning. Father, we come to you today in Jesus' name. And Lord, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to hear your word. 
God, I thank you that as your word is going forth, that your word is true, God, and that truth cuts through the darkness of lies. I thank you, Lord, that our minds and hearts are open to receive what you have for us today. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, so a firewall, as a quick reminder, it decides whether to block or allow certain traffic or for today's sermon, our firewall determines are we going to block or let certain people into our lives. And the Apostle Paul says it this way, do not be deceived, evil company corrupts good habits. Now in order to really understand this book written called 1 Corinthians, we first have to understand the city that they were living in. So think of the city of Corinth as like the biblical Las Vegas. That Corinth was sin city. That within Corinth, there was a variety of ideologies that were contrary to what God says. That everybody worshiped their own gods and things that were evil were defined as good and things that were good were defined as evil. And now you take a church and you place them in the middle of Sin City, and guess what? That is a good thing, because the light shines in the darkness, and the darkness will not overcome it. But here's the problem with this church specifically. They were allowing the wrong people to begin influencing what they were doing. So when the Apostle Paul is saying, do not be deceived, that evil company corrupts good habits, he's saying that there are people who are having influence in your church that are moving you away from what God would have you do, not towards it. And the reality is this principle applies to our own lives. And we understand this, that sometimes when the wrong person comes around, it'll push you in the wrong direction. How many parents do I have in the room today? Parents, wave at me. Have you ever had your kids excited and they introduce you to a friend? And they say, say, hey, this is this person. And after five minutes, you're like, oh boy. <laughs> I know where this goes. We definitely not doing a sleepover. Mm-mm. And you know it's going to turn into, why don't you ever let me do anything? And you know that this person, although the person might not be bad, that for who your child is and for where they are going, that this person is a sort of a Trojan horse. That this friend is carrying something that my son or my daughter does not need to be influenced by. And the difficult part is that as parents, you are God's firewall. That you are the one placed by God to protect your children. Here's the hard part, even when they don't understand why. The firewall doesn't say, I'm only going to protect you if you agree with what I'm doing. The firewall says, no matter what you may think, I'm going to protect you because I love you. That is the role that the parent plays. And here the Apostle Paul is like a parent writing to his children. He's like, my children, listen to me. Evil company corrupts good habits. You are being corrupted by the world that is around you. And before we get into a mindset of, okay, so do we as a church just isolate and cut everybody off? No. The Apostle Paul makes two distinctions. He says, when it comes to the people, that we are not to cut off people. Because anyone can be transformed by the gospel of Jesus Christ. When it comes to the ideas that people bring, there are certain ideas that we ought to reject. There are certain belief systems that do not align with Christianity. And the Apostle Paul is saying, listen, you cannot mix these two things together. It's going to corrupt what is good. If you look all throughout the Bible, God is very clear that when God's people move into a new land, he says, destroy all their idols, all the places of worship, get rid of all of them. Why? Because you're going to be corrupted by it. Would anyone like to guess what happens when they're like, all right, let's just keep one. Next page. Oh, Lord. (laughs) Y'all done messed up. And this idea is the same idea that Paul is getting at. That there are things that we should not be giving access to our life because the bad company can corrupt it. We are not to reject those outside the church, but there are certain ideas that we are to reject. 
And as we look at the point of a firewall in the picture, it becomes very clear. So this is a bad person. Would anyone like to name him? You said Pablo? (laughs) Oliver. Oliver is a hacker. Oliver wants to steal your credit card information. You know why Oliver cannot steal your credit card information? You've got a firewall. So even though Oliver wants to steal your information, ruin your life, burn down your city, he's not able to because the firewall is doing its job. Oliver has evil intentions and wants to get at what is good, but he's unable to because of a firewall. Let's see the next picture. What's the Christian's name? Jeremy. Jeremy. He over here. Thank you, Jeremy. (laughs) Jeremy wants to be attacked by Oliver, but the evil that Oliver has cannot touch Jeremy because he has a a firewall. So the firewall stops the ideals from the outside from getting to the inside. And likewise, there are some people in our lives that need to meet the firewall. There are some people that influence you every day that need to meet the firewall. You know what some of these arrows are? You know what a big one is? Gossip. You just, the the door opens. Girl, let me tell you. Girl, let me tell you. Those six words? (laughs) Hang up. Can you hear me? I can't hear you. Right, you already know where it's going. It is like, oh, it's just all fun and games. Is it? What's God say about gossip? Rut row. And I'm not speaking as one who has it all figured out. Believe me, I've got plenty of work to do till the day I die. But people bring certain things with them that don't belong in your life. And the firewall is what protects us from some of those ideas and things that ought, ought not be there. Let's see that last picture real quick. Will this firewall with a giant hole in the middle of it work? No. What's this? This Oliver? Oliver is going to get to Jeremy's computer because the firewall is not working properly. You know what a big issue that we might have is with our firewalls? Sometimes it's our heart. It's like, yeah, but if you understood why they are the way they are, then you wouldn't, right? You start to make excuses for the way that people treat you or treat others or talk to you. And believe me, your heart is in the right place. But you can have the right heart and still call a spade a spade. You can have the right heart and still acknowledge that certain things are not okay. And this is the role of a firewall. When we look at this phrase by phrase, phrase by phrase, the Apostle Paul first says this, do not be deceived. Now, this word deceived is not quite don't be tricked. He's literally saying, do not be led astray or begin to wander. Do not be led in the wrong direction. Everybody say led. Led. Not like the stuff that makes you cough, like in the wrong type of paint. Led like leader and follower. Who here has a dog that they take on walks? Who here got a dog that they don't walk, but they know they should? He's like... When you take a, go- a dog on a wash, I can't speak. I'm disconnected from the Wi-Fi, apparently. <laughs> when you take a dog on a walk, you attach a what to the collar? A leash. And what's another name for a leash? Starts with an L. Lead. A lead. Does anyone know why a leash might be called a lead? Because wherever you walk, you will lead the dog in that direction. So when the Apostle Paul is saying, do not be led astray, it's like an image of if you are connected to the wrong leader, to the wrong person, you will move the wrong direction. Do not be led astray. There are people in your life that might be leading you in the wrong direction. Like actually, it's not just a cute little like, oh, you know, no, actually, moving you away from the direction that you ought to be going. And some of you by your face, you're thinking about that person right now. 
I'm going to look down. Why would he say this to this church? He says it in the second half. Evil company corrupts good morals. In other words, you cannot separate the people you surround yourself with from the life that you're going to live. You cannot separate the people you surround yourself with from the life you are going to live. If you are surrounded by constantly negative people, guess what? You're going to be negative. If you're surrounded by constantly judgmental people, guess what? You're going to be judgmental. If you're constantly surrounded by people full of joy, guess what? You're going to feel joy. If you're constantly surrounded by people who genuinely love you, guess what? You're going to feel that love. You see, this works both ways. When you look at the people that you are closest with and the people that you've brought into your life, I want to ask you, does it look like this picture of a city on fire? The five people that you bring into your life, do they make your life look like this? Now look at home girl at the top right. You see how stressed she is? What's she even looking for? Man's giving a piggyback ride. Why? Home girl's praying. He did. Look how close he is to getting stabbed if you can't see. This is a city on fire. Watch what Proverbs 13, 20 says. It says that he who walks with the wise will be wise but the companion of fools will be destroyed. Are your friends foolish? Well, yeah, all my friends are fools, but I'm not. Oops. Yeah, all my friends are, but I'm not. Listen, you cannot separate who you're connected with from the life that you're going to live. You might have heard it this way, show me your friends and I will show you your future. And this is the cheat code for success. What I love about that is it works both ways. That yes, when we are surrounded by the wrong people, it might make our city look like it's on fire. But guess what? A city on fire, when you bring on the right people, the fires begin to stop. That the woman who's stressed out, I don't know what she's looking for, she might just be enjoying the sunset. That the building on fire it might be turning into a skyscraper. That the ships that are sinking might become bigger and go back and forth and bring things. The image that I want you to see today is that this image can be a representation of life, but the opposite is also true. That when you bring in the right people, they begin to build your city up. That when you're connected connected to people who love you, you're going to start to be built up. This is a two-way street. When people who are wise are allowed past your firewall, guess what? It starts to bring healing. It starts to bring comfort. It starts to bring the things that you're looking for. Here's a big problem. Can we see the picture of the firewall again? With the, we need the one with Jeremy. Let's get Jeremy, firewall, and then Oliver. Sometimes we say... I need to protect myself from what somebody is saying. But what they're actually saying is good for you. Sometimes people who are calling us to better, we say that they're evil because we don't want to hear it. Sometimes people call you out on your foolishness and we, our firewall says, nope, nope, nope. Have you ever talked to someone who's clearly in denial and you're trying to help but their firewall is blocking you out? Wave at me if that's that's happened to you. Now, if you've ever been that person, put up both hands. (laughs) Me too, me too. That sometimes when people are calling us to better, we have a set of rules that says, I'm not listening. Because sometimes we like to feel broken down. Sometimes we like to believe the wrong things about ourselves. And when you welcome in people who love you, who are wise, who care about you, they might tell you things that you don't want to hear about yourself because they love you, because they want what's best for you. And those are the moments when we ought to lean in. A firewall, when we look at the definition, 
It decides whether to allow or block specific people based on a defined set of security rules. I want to ask you today, is it time for a new set of rules? Have you had rules that blocks out the people who are healthy and holds on to those who are hurtful? Have you had a set of rules that says, you know what, because I am not worth anything more, I'm going to surround my pe- myself with people who remind me how I feel. I'm going to surround myself with people who hurt me. I'm going to surround myself with people who don't actually care about me. It might be time for a new set of rules. I want to ask you, do the rules that you live by help to build up your life or to tear it down? Have the rules led to a city that's on fire or a city of peace? You know what's an amazing thing about when there's an issue when, when the, with a piece of technology? You can simply download an update. Look at someone next to you and say, it's time for an update. Say it one more time. Say, it's time for an update. Now, you might be the person <laughs> that Apple has been begging you to update your phone since 2019. Okay. <laughs> You should update your phone. And here's why. You know the purpose of an update? To make the phone run better. Now, Apple, they'd be updating to, I think they'd be breaking it, like buy the new one. Now, we're going to use Apple. We're going to use Jesus. When Jesus sends an update into your life, do you know why? To help you grow. You know why Jesus would send you updates? to confirm, conform you more and more into his image. So every single week when you're coming into church and connecting and hearing God's word, guess what? It's a little update. Update 1.1. Update 1.2, relationships. Update 1.3, faith. Update 1.4, righteousness. And as we are getting these small updates, we are continually, the Bible says, being conformed into the image of Christ. You know the best part about it? Guess whose work it is? The Holy Spirit. He is the one who does the work. Our role is to hear that word and not get in the way of it. That's it. Don't get in the way of what God is doing. What God is asking us to do is when he is speaking, take down the firewall. When God is speaking in faith, listen to what he is speaking into you. Because the words that God brings are the updates that are making you more and more like him. So, Pastor Josh, my firewall hasn't been working properly. Clearly, I feel like I struggle with these decisions. What thing should a good firewall protect? Well, I'm glad you asked. Number one. A good firewall needs to protect your CPU, which is a, I'm going to say the heart. Now, I think CPU stands for core processing unit. Either way, all this tech, I was struggling, so I looked it up. Here's what it says. The CPU or the microprocessor is the heart of, everyone say heart. It's the heart of any computer system. The microprocessor calculates, performs logical operations, and manages data flows by reading instructions from memory and then executing them. Huh? It's very important. (laughs) The CPU is at the core of the computer. So in order for a computer to operate, the CPU must be working properly. Everything starts there and flows out of it. Does that make sense? Think of it as almost the brain of your computer. And if the CPU gets corrupted, guess what? The entire system's corrupted. If you can destroy the CPU, you don't need to destroy anything else. Because when you destroy what's at the heart of something, everything connected to it is going to drop. Proverbs puts it this way. Above all else, guard your heart. For everything you do flows from it. Everything you do flows from it. It's the year 2003, and you trusted someone, 
and they messed up and they hurt you really bad, and that's going to affect your what? Your heart. It's 2013, and there's someone that you genuinely should trust because they love you and they care for you. And how do we make that decision many times? We say, in 2003, I feel like I was in the same spot, and I trusted, and I got hurt. So now, when there's someone that you actually should trust, we're wearing the 2003 goggles, and we say, no. Above all else, guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. Do you see why that makes sense now? That many times the things that happened in the past are actually steering us now. I'm going to give you a challenge. Do not do this challenge, okay? Everyone say, I will not do this challenge. Get on the highway after church and drive home only using your rearview mirror. The whole, this whole right outside the church going to be messy. I'm going to be like, I don't know what happened, officer. These people are crazy. I don't know what happened at church today. We understand naturally you cannot move forward by looking only in the rearview mirror. And sometimes what happens in our hearts <laughs> causes us to try to live in the future by staring at the past. A good firewall ought to protect our heart. And when we protect our hearts, it allows us to better connect and love those who are around us. So it's not just for us, but also those who are around us, your children, your friends, your coworkers, everyone gets to benefit from your heart being protected. Number two, protect your memory or your mind. <coughs> if we're being honest, you might have spent this whole sermon thinking about one person. And you're like, oh boy. I should have stayed home today. I knew it. I felt it. Should have stayed home. Because now when I see this person, this sermon will be going through my mind. Well, when it comes to the mind, a lot of the things that we do and struggle with, it's actually a struggle up here. And sometimes we believe things that are not true. And because we believe things that are not true, we build our firewalls based on a lie. So, example, you have a lie in your firewall that says, I am not loved. In your mind, your firewall says, I am not loved, I'm not worthy of love. So I'm gonna live my life in that way. And then God says, I love you. What's your firewall gonna do? Whoosh, nope, can't be true, can't be true. You have a firewall that says, I don't deserve any better than where I'm at now. So a clear opportunity for you to move in the right direction comes along and what do you say? Nope, this does not align with the set of rules that I have. And that happens in the mind. That's why Paul says in Romans, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of the mind. There probably is in every person in this room some pattern of thought or pattern of thinking that is not in alignment with God. And when we go through life and we see a situation, our mind might be leading us in the wrong direction. And this is why a firewall protects the mind. Watch what it says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10. We demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. There are things that sets itself up against God's knowledge called lies. Everyone say lies. And we take captive every thought and make it obedient to Christ. So if you have a thought that you are lonely and that nobody cares about you and that you're all alone and God says in his word, I will never leave you nor forsake you. There is a lie that has taken root. And you know what we do with that lie? We take it out and we bring it to the truth of what God's word says. Whatever that struggle might be today, we don't have time to go into every single detail. The question is not, how do I feel about this? It's what does God say about this? 
And if what you're feeling is not in alignment with what God is saying, I want to encourage you, keep pushing forward. Push forward because the truth cannot lose to the darkness. When we talk about this idea of ideas, Pastor Josh, come on, one idea. You tell me one idea can be that much of a problem? One thought? Are you telling me one person brings one thought into my life and is really going to set a city on fire? Genesis 3. Now the serpent was more crafty than any of the wild animals the Lord God had made. He said to the woman, did God really say you must not eat from any tree in the garden? And it's like ever since then, humanity has this bad habit of taking the word of a serpent over the word of the Lord. And what Paul is saying here, when we talk about taking thoughts captive, it's like these thoughts might pop up. These voices might pop up. Do you really need to go to church? Come on. Do you really need to say sorry? Come on. It was 10 years ago. They ought to grow up. Right? And these thoughts begin to take root, and it actually changes the decisions and the lives that we live. But at the same time, it works both ways. So you're reading your Bible, and maybe there's an area of unforgiveness, and you read this line that says, forgive others as Christ forgave you. And it says, oh, shoot. The basis for forgiveness does not talk about what the other person did. It talks about what Christ did. And what Christ did isn't going to change. So if Christ already forgave me, according to his word, we ought to, we ought to forgive others. So now you can't leave church without that idea in your mind. We've all got that idea in our mind, right? They're all like, shoot, I should have stayed home for real. <laughs> this is the nature of God's word. When our firewalls are set up in the right way, We let the truth in, and that protects our minds. Number three, we borrow perspective. Sometimes you might feel like your firewall is so jaded that you're unable to see what is right and what is true. Proverbs 24, 3. Through wisdom, a house is built, and by understanding, it is established. By knowledge, the rooms are filled with all precious and pleasant riches. A wise man is strong. Yes, knowledge increases strength. Four... So that four means everything I just said depends on this. By wise counsel, you will wage your own war, and in a multitude of counselors, there is safety. In a multitude of counselors, there is safety. You know what one of the best phone calls you can make is to a trusted friend? You, call, you dial them, and you say this. This is a good start to a phone call. Am I crazy or... And you know what a good friend will say? Yes, you are. Yes, you are. Because sometimes in a moment, we might feel for sure that something is wrong or messed up or we ought to act in a certain way. But when you call your wise counsel, they will talk you off that ledge. And this is the importance of having wise counsel around us. Now, <coughs> I have your note in my notes because I've done it before. You call wise counsel and they say what you don't want to hear. It's like, let me call someone else. You go through your whole context list like, all right, all right, God, you got it. I'm wrong here. When we talk about this firewall and having proper relationships that we're connected to, my main point is this today. It's not just about connecting to the right people sometimes. Sometimes we need to be honest with ourselves and say we're connected to some people that are no good for us. That sometimes we're connected to people, and yes, it hurts to admit it, to people that don't have our best interests at heart. But you know what I love about this sermon series? It's not the idea that God's going to take away a relationship and you'll be by yourself and have nobody. But everyone look around the room real quick. Look around. We're all on the same team here. We're all unified under one body because of what Jesus Christ did. So in those moments where you might be feeling like you're lonely, the Bible says in Proverbs, if one wants to have friends, first show yourself to be friendly. Shake someone's hand after church. 
And it's like, no one wants to shake my hand, just karate chop them and be like, you're going to shake my hand. Bring them down in Jesus' name. <laughs> As we talk about these relationships that are formed, the same way one thought can take things off the edge and off the wrong way, you never know how one friendship at church could change your life. You never know how going to one lady's reflect night can change your life forever. Because what happens at times like that? They talk about a struggle, and it's like, I've been struggling with blank. And then 30 people at the same time, girl, me too. And now you're not walking this journey alone. That is the design of the church. And maybe you're here today and you feel like you're disconnected from church, like you've never given your life to Jesus. Well, I want to give you an opportunity to do that today. And we do that by praying a prayer that goes like this. Repeat after me. Say, dear God, I come to you today just like I am. I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and my Savior. Jesus, I believe that you died and rose for me. Come into my heart. Come into my life to change me and make me new. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. My name is Pastor John Mark, and I'm so glad we were able to connect together today. If this impacted you in any way, I need you to do a few things for me. I need you to like and subscribe to this channel and head over to FamilyChurchNY.com to take your next steps.